Are you ready to call your power back from debilitating symptoms of fear that you're facing every day? Now, in most cases, fear are exactly that. They are fears. Now, there are also all echoes and ripple effects from your past that is now having a great impact on your quality of life. Hi, my name is Yvette Rose, author and founder of Metaphysical Anatomy, which is a book to guide you to understand the hidden messages in the emotional body. And welcome to today's topic, which is understanding the symptoms of your fears, part one of two. Now, our body has different types of ways of reacting to fear. Now, what can be frustrating is that if you have a fear surfacing and you feel the symptom of the fear physically, then it can also be an extremely stressful experience. Fear is not just an emotional wave that we feel, and we can physically in the body, in the emotional body, also react that way. Now, there's also, for example, now a high chance that you can react to something or someone in your environment that triggers a deep-seated fear in you. And before you are not even able to consciously really process what happened, your emotional body takes the lead and then starts to react to a deep-seated fear that is now being brought back into your life, into your conscious mind from your subconscious mind and also from your emotional memory in the emotional body. Now, the reason why this happens so fast is also why you don't always have conscious awareness of it before it happens. And that is that your fears are strongly connected to your instinctive responses. Now, your instinctive responses are also hardwired to special muscles in your body. And these muscles can contract like at any given moment, right? Especially when your body perceives a threat. Now, what makes this a little bit tricky is that you can respond to a fear that is in your immediate environment, meaning a real perceived threat. And your instinctive responses react it's almost like jumping when you hear like an unexpected sound and you didn't think about reacting, did you? Now, sometimes what can happen is that a sound or a smell or an object or a person and circumstances can actually trigger an old traumatic memory. And it can even trigger an ancestral genetic memory. But your subconscious mind, when it's triggered, will scan its memories and then try to relate to the sound or the smell or an object or the person or your circumstances. And then when a suitable memory is found, it activates the emotion and the experiences of that. Now, in most cases, the subconscious mind, right, the subconscious memory is so deep seated in the subconscious mind that you don't have direct conscious awareness which specific memory has been activated. However, the physical body biochemically now reacts, right? It reacts and it can still react to the memory as if though it is still happening. Now, you emotionally and physically can feel the stress in your body. However, you're not able to consciously make the connection which specific memory is triggered. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more challenging. And that is when a deep ancestral memory is triggered and then your physical body biochemically reacts to it. Now, the sensations that you feel can be so foreign, yet so intense and so real because of the biochemical reaction from your body. So now here I'm quickly going to briefly talk, for example, about a physical symptoms of fear that can come up or it probably already has. And then the possible deep seated historical meaning of it is foreign. So let's discuss a few options of how fears can physically come forward in the emotional body. Now, one of the things that can happen is the tightening of your throat and having a difficulty breathing. Now, it is a common symptom and definitely one that I personally have also experienced. Now, the symptom here is actually showing you that you feel suffocated in your circumstances, right? You feel like there are no clear options to, for example, to correct challenges and also people's behaviors around you that's challenging you. Now, there's also a deep fear of feeling out of control and not being able to speak up. That fear now there is stuck because there's a prior trauma connected to this fear in terms of, for example, setting boundaries, 
anything associated with needing to express a boundary. Now you can also, for example, here have strong tension in your chest. Now remember that your heart is the most powerful electromagnetic field that your body has to give and receive information through frequencies, but through other electromagnetic fields of beings that are alive, such as people and animals. Now, when this area holds trauma, it can also surface as tension, especially when you are in a heart opening situation and your heart wants to start to open up to someone in your life. Now, what can also happen is that you start to receive information through the heart from the electromagnetic field with someone that could perhaps now cause you and is triggering you in terms of having to open up, not necessarily open up your heart, but open up in some way to the person. And I'm not saying having to be vulnerable with someone, but there's an aspect that the situation is now asking you to open up. And what could be happening is that you have a fear now coming up because of past prior traumatic experiences, or this can actually be showing you that something about the person or the circumstances are actually generally off. So that's a little bit the tricky aspect of having this beautiful electromagnetic field in the heart center. But if that area is not in alignment, if it's not balanced, then there can be confusion in terms of how to interpret that information. Now, these fear-based thoughts that you also have are brought to life, like I said, through the electromagnetic field and the impulses from your neural pathways and that then expands into the emotional body. Now, you don't just have neural pathways firing off in the brain. You actually have in the heart and in the gut as well. And that is also through these neurotransmitters and the firing off of these neural pathways that sets off the electromagnetic field. It gives energetic life. And this is an actual fact. You guys should really research this. There's really, really cool um, information out there on that. And then it sends through the heartbeat these waves, pulsates the information back and forth between you and other people. Now here is also why thoughts are propelled forward as electrical surges throughout neural pathways, right? Because as these thoughts are now moving through these neural pathways, setting off in motion the electromagnetic fields, right? And that's then created there. Now, this also brings power and movement to your consciousness through this deep non-local field of electromagnetic fields that can now have an effect on matter in your environment. So even just being around people, like I said earlier, right, who are also fear-based, here's another twist. If you are around other people who are also fear-based, this, their state, right, the information of the fears being transmitted through their electromagnetic field will actually intensify your own sensitivity to your fears. Now, the negative reaction is also triggered when your personal space and your boundaries have now been overstepped and you feel powerless to establish boundaries, causing a disruption in this field and also a vulnerable opening. Now, deep unresolved anger that needs to also be expressed is also held in this area. However, you have, of course, a fear of expressing yourself. The heart area is also about the feeling that you have to defend or fight for your, sp your personal space or your territory, right? So it can, for example, now translate, you know, if you had a childhood and you lacked a lot of privacy or you didn't quite know where and how to find your identity or establish your sense of self, then that can have a direct impact on the heart center area. Now, another way that a fear can come forward is through shaking and shivering. And this is when your body is experiencing shock and it's trying to release stress that it experienced. Right, so shaking and shivering normally actually happens when your body is actually trying to heal the origin of a fear. Right, so when you start to shiver or you start to shake, next time when a fear is activated and you feel cold, do not try to cover yourself. Actually stand up and jump. Right, this helps the atomic nervous system to finally discharge the excessive nervous energy and it resets the nervous system because your body starts to go cold and you start to shiver. And that shivering actually is with the intention to stimulate the atomic nervous system. So help your body stand up and jump and shake your arms and shake your legs and just jump to help your body to discharge of that nervous stress. And it will help your body and the nervous system to beautifully reset itself and then cover yourself. And the next one that we have is ringing sound in your ear. Now, this symptom could relate to a sound that you've associated with a traumatic event. 
and also a similar sound in your environment could also have set off this memory in your subconscious mind. Now, ringing in your ears could also mean that you, for example, thought of something that triggered an old unpleasant memory in the conscious or subconscious mind. But that is now the emotional body wanting you to pay attention to that specific thought, right? Because there is information in that thought that can actually help you to shed some light on unresolved issues or fears that are being triggered in your life or fears that have become chronically activated. Now, questions also from your past, right, that has never been answered, comes through the ringing. Sometimes when you think of something and you start to feel fearful, right, you feel fearful and you have like a ding, ringing sound, pay immediately attention to what you just thought because your intuition is trying to tell you, hey, that thought you just, that you just had, pay attention to it because there's a lot of truth to it. Another form of physical symptoms of fear can be sweat waves. Right now, this happens when there's a fear that is triggered and you start to sweat. Now, sweating takes place when your body perceives something or someone as being or feeling toxic to you. And you almost like want to detox them out of your life. Right, so sweating also means that your fight or flight responses has now been activated and it's causing your body and the temperature to start to rise. And sweating is also your body's way of trying to cool down. Now, psychosomatically speaking, it also begs the question, which person or situation is causing you to feel deep anger, right? Yet you are too scared to say how you feel because of a deep sense of shame or perhaps fear of rejection. And your deep suppressed anger is now triggering the heat and the inflammatory response in your body. Nausea and butterfly sensations in your stomach is also another symptom that can be triggered because of fear. Because the body also here goes into a fight or flight state and too much gastric acid is actually released, causing nausea in the stomach. Now, psychosomatically speaking, this also relates to deep unresolved fears or stress with a mother figure that's now being triggered in your life, perhaps indirectly through completely unrelated circumstances. However, your circumstances are triggering deep-seated unresolved issues with a mother or a female figure in your life. Now, when you look at the physical side of the body as well, the body is trying to empty anything from its stomach because it's preparing itself for an attack. So when you feel the nausea, subconsciously what's happening in the emotional body is that there's a fear of being attacked. So if nausea is, for example, a fear symptom that you have, then explore unresolved traumas related to feeling either emotionally or physically attacked. Because butterfly sensation in your stomach as well means that you normally um, feel in your current circumstances triggered, right? It's triggering all fears that result from old family disputes that took place in the past. And this is now resurfacing in the form of old memories and unpleasant circumstances from your past. Feeling dizzy and faint and disorientated is also another symptom of a fear being triggered. Now this means that they, this is an end result of, say for example, underactive sympathetic nerves, right? And the hyperactive vagus nerve combined with that, as well as with your blood pressure not being regulated properly at the same time. Now the activated fear causes the blood pressure from the heart and the gut area to become irregular. And that is when you now start to look at the psychosomatic aspect of it. That means it's because you are in a situation where you don't know if you should follow your heart or your instinctive responses. Now this is when emotions and logical thinking completely clashes. And then last but not least, the top of the fear symptoms that can come up in the physical body is a dry mouth. And this is a result of a fear being triggered as well. Now, this means that you have a fear of judgment or even a hostile reaction from a person or from a group of people. And your mouth starts to dry up with the intention to actually get you to stop talking in order to avoid possible verbal attack from someone. However, this is only an old experience that was now triggered in the form of this fear happening and triggering it again, making you realize and feel well, perhaps I need to keep quiet. And then you have the physical response. However, in most cases, in most cases, it's just an implicit memory again from the subconscious mind that is triggered and you're not making the conscious connection as to what is really being triggered from the past. 
Now, I would also highly recommend that you also move on to the second part of this video because there is so much more information about fears that I want to share with you, especially also how to heal your fears and be free from them once and for all. Until next time, guys, be the light that you are. Hi guys, thank you for joining me and remember to grab your copy of Metaphysical Anatomy on Amazon 679 Medical Element and I also wrote about the psychosomatic root causes of that and I'm spoiling it because I even add a key point for you to start looking at important questions that you can ask yourself to start improving your quality of life and also remember to catch me on Instagram Yvette Rose one with the digit one and Metaphysical Anatomy on our Facebook fan page. Bye guys!